Okay, pet parents, so we want to talk about feline pan leukopenia virus, huh? Well, buckle up, cat owners, because we're going to drop some knowledge bombs. You know what to do with it, Biscotti. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to break that massive word down into three different parts. The first part being the word pan, which means all. The second part being leuco, which in our case is going to mean white blood cells. And the third part being penia. Okay, I need you guys to get your minds out of the gutters because I said penia, not... Shut up. You know exactly what I didn't say. This is a family show which means a decrease. So if we take all that together, the word panleukopenia means a decrease in all of the white blood cells, which is only just like a tiny bit of a misnomer, and we will get into that a little bit later. Now we talk about what type of virus the panleukopenia virus is. It's actually a parvovirus, and specifically it's a protoparvovirus. And yes, it is the same virus as the canine parvovirus, which is what gives dogs the very bad bloody diarrhea. And now my last little tidbit is this. When I say the same virus, I really do mean the same virus. The most common type of canine parvovirus actually directly mutated from the feline panleukopenia virus. And yes, cats can get infected with canine parvovirus. And parvoviruses need to infect rapidly dividing cells in order to survive. So in this case, the bone marrow, the lymphoid tissue, and the intestines. And this is why we see the abnormalities that we're about to talk about. So there's a whole bunch of different clinical signs of feline panleukopenia virus that we may run into. When it comes to the GI signs, even though bloody diarrhea is something that we can see in cats with feline panleukopenia virus, only about 15% of cats will actually get the bloody diarrhea, which is very different from canine parvovirus, where bloody diarrhea is a very common issue. Unfortunately, for kittens that are either infected while still in the uterus or shortly after birth, a lot of them will either be stillborn or pass away after they're born. For those that aren't, it's pretty common for them to develop a whole bunch of different neurological signs or something called cerebellar hypoplasia. Now, these neurological signs will develop because the virus can infect the central nervous system and prevent the development of a part of the brain called the cerebellum, which is very important for sensory, motor, and balance. Testing for panleukopenia virus is actually pretty straightforward, and even though we have a whole slew of different tests that we can use, one of the first ones that most of us are going to lean towards is a fecal antigen test, which is the exact same thing we use to check for canine parvovirus. And here's why I said the name's a little bit of a misnomer. When we look at a complete blood count, or a CBC, even though we can see a decreased number of all five of the different types of white blood cells, more often than not, what we're going to see is just a decrease in the neutrophils and the lymphocytes. Now, we may also see a decrease in the platelets and we may also see a low-grade anemia as well. When it comes to treating panleukopenia virus, there's no specific treatment. It's all supportive care and dealing with whatever clinical signs the cat's showing us. And depending on how severe the infection is, some cats may require a good chunk of time hospitalized in an ICU. 